Hey, what's up guys? It's Flex and welcome back. Last year, my car had about 60,000 miles on it. And when I was driving over a lot of bumps, I noticed there was a lot of clunking and clicking noises coming from the front of my car. It actually kind of sounded like this. After doing some investigation, it looks like the issue was my sway bar links. And of course, my sway bar links were shot. You can see in the picture here, the rubber is torn, there's grease leaking out, and it was really loose. So that's what was causing all the clicking and clunking noises coming from the front of my car. So I went ahead and bought a new set and swapped it out myself. The car drove fine over the past year, but I did take it on a lot of road trips and they were really bumpy roads, a lot of potholes. It's Massachusetts, so the roads are really crappy. And now I'm experiencing the clunking noise again. So I went online, bought a brand new set, one for the passenger side, one for the driver's side, and decided to shoot a video for you guys. So here's how I replaced my sway bar links. The first thing I did was make sure my car was on a level surface, and I removed the front wheel and jacked up the car. Next, I put a jack stand underneath the control arm and I slowly lowered the jack. Not that much, just a few inches so that way there's some load on the sway bar link. Now I took some penetrating fluid and I decided to spray the top and bottom nut. Let it sit for a bit. This will allow it to come off a lot easier when it comes time to taking off the nuts. So to remove the top nut, I used an 18 millimeter wrench and I used an Allen hex bit on a ratchet. I remember when I took the OEM sway bar links off, it was a Torx bit that I used. So for the bottom part, it was a little more difficult to do because there's not a lot of space. I actually ended up jacking up the car a few inches just to make some room. I did use the Allen hex bit on the ratchet to hold the sway bar link shaft in place, but this time I used an 18 millimeter ratchet wrench to ratchet off the nut. And to be honest, if it was really rusty or really tight, I was planning to take a cutoff wheel to cut the nut off, or I was gonna use a nut splitter to split the nut right off. So after about 20 minutes of fighting it and I was able to crack the nut loose, I ended up just using an Allen key and then using an 18 millimeter ratchet wrench to ratchet the rest of the nut off. So now that both of the nuts are removed, I jacked up the car to relieve the load on the sway bar link and I was able to pull the sway bar link right off. Now this is the brand new passenger sway bar link. Um, you have to get the sway bar link for the passenger side and the driver's side because they are actually completely different. Here's the old one I just removed off the car. As you can see, there's tons of play even though the rubber piece is not torn. And the new one is nice and tight. So let's go ahead and put this on. The good thing is the install is actually a lot easier. It's just reverse. Go ahead and align the shafts of the sway bar links with the holes. You will need to lower your car a bit so it lines up nice and perfectly. Install the nuts and go ahead and tighten them down. Now that the top and bottom nuts are nice and tight, I just grab the sway bar link just to make sure it's nice and firm, make sure it's not loose. And that's it, I'm done and I can move to the driver's side. Well, there you have it. That's how I swapped out my sway bar links. Everything's nice and tight and the car rides amazing now without any clunking or clicking noises. It really pays to have the right tools when it comes to doing this job. 
I hope you guys liked the video. If you do, hit like below. As always, make sure you subscribe, and I will see you next time.